It's getting a decent hitch of maple today. Zodiac and Jim. We forgot Zodiac's collar. So we switched stuff around and Jim's wearing Billy Wayne's collar that's a little too big. And the draft isn't anywhere near right. And you won't notice this on a small load, but you will on a decent load. Look at that collar on Jim right up. Zodiac stays right where it belongs. Jim's rides up. So that's a product of having a bad draft. Um, this case, it's too low for this high hitch point. Uh, what happens with a bad draft, the collar rides up and it can choke the horse. You know, the bottom of it can cut his wind off. Also, anytime that collar moves, uh, it can cause a sore. Look at Zodiac staying right where it should. So we're going to get through about half a day logging and then fix that the right way. How's logging going, Nick? It's going fine. Pretty good when you cut ash like this. Pretty decent stick here. Still alive. Barely. Right on the edge of it. I know I showed a video there the other day of the emerald ash borer and, and it didn't show up. Um, there it is. That's the emerald ash borer. And you can see this is a little dead between the bark and the, and the wood there. Still, still saleable uh, at a good dollar, actually. Ash is bringing money around here. Um, you look at the end, it's alive. It should look alive and bold, you know, hold moisture. That's kind of how you know the ash is uh, still good. And you can't have any black track, which are little pencil marks on the end. Uh, what happens is some other bug gets in this gallery that the emerald ash borer makes and it... Well, I'll just be crude. It shits, and when it does, it stains the um, stains the log all through, and the lumber is no good. Feel good to be logging on a Sunday? Sure. <laughs> really? <laughs> wow, Nick. Nick says every stitch you make on Sunday, you'll rip out with your nose. Isn't that the old saying? We're only going to put a half day in, huh? But I don't think I've heard that one yet. We're only going to put a half day in. That's all these horses need. But Oh, we got some horse pulling coming up this week, and we figure we better uh, get to the woods while we can. We also might have some bad weather. Got uh, Zodiac doing a good job for us, and old ugly Jim. Jim's collar's way too big, because that's not Jim's collar. That's uh, Billy Wayne's collar. Somehow we forgot Zodi's collar. He's wearing Jim's collar, and that actually works pretty well for him. Well, I'll film Nick trucking along. Okay. Got a decent ash hitch headed to the landing. Stop them uh, just before the sun, rest them in the shade. Kind of a hot mid-July day here. So we make sure we rest them in the shade. That Zodiac is such a dork. We always have to make sure we rest him where he can't reach anything to eat. And look, he found a piece of goldenrod. What do you think would happen if there were goldenrod in his hay? He'd probably start a revolution but if he can get away with eating something he isn't supposed to that that's fun Whoa. Whoa. horses are a little cagey they know we're gonna have a hard start here but i wanted to show this this opportunity shows itself a lot um tree fell down just where it should it's still on the stump with the arch style cart we can back over the stump and uh, put two chokers on and have a good high lift. So it's gonna start a little hard, then it should be lifted. Whoa. So we're gonna head right through there and probably make a pretty good pull. Whip. Thought it was going over. Yeah, I knew, uh, I knew there was a possibility that one wheel would come up or maybe even tip. And normally I'd be walking. I should have been a little more aware. 
going to um, whoa, do something with this team. Whoa. It's a little overdue. I'm going to go about halfway up that hill whoa, and rest them. And make them stand in the collars, just like Jim is doing right now. up in the collar. He's got a habit of that, and by God, I ain't going to put up with it. Woo. Woo. Right there is where they belong, and he knows it. Woo. What we need to do a little more this year is get our, uh, get our wagon out and head for some hills. Woo. They're acting like buttholes, Nick. Yeah. They won't they do are. that with you on Tuesday, will they? Hopefully not. No, Nick's got them. that last one for the last couple anytime since we left the stump this doesn't start easy these horses have to get after it and pull and uh they get a little cagey they 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 get their adrenaline pumped up you know watch a weightlifter before he lifts weights in the olympics he gets a little pumped up a football player does and these guys have to do the same thing uh in order to make a hard pull uh I mean, I don't want it ridiculous, and I don't want them out of hand, but I'll put up with a little of what I did there. Um, and generally, after a while, they'll see they can pull just as much without being pumped up. But um, all horses, even the most calm, even even old Martin Dowling, who does a great job out there in Michigan, even his horses are a little more pumped up at a horse pull than they are at a work sled or a plow or something like that. And even ours are, and ours behave pretty darn good. Pretty well at a horse pole. Well, we'll go up over the edge here, Nick. Now, if you notice, they started better. And that's where Zodiac is where he belongs. That's because I put a whip on his ass. He's backing out. He's not making these puzzles. Yeah. Tell you something else I noticed about Zodiac. He's worse about um, backing out of the collar on that side than he is the, the off side. Well, I'll get this one to the landing and I'll be back for you, Nick. Okay. <laughs> Take the good when the bad when it comes to logging. And right now we're doing the good. Pretty nice maple three logger. Ah, the way things are pulling, they're, they're coming along pretty nicely today. I almost wish we'd have uh, left that one a double to take out, but better safe than sorry, not overload them. These boys have a horse pull to try to compete in tomorrow, right, Nick? Yeah. So let's introduce things. Jim, get your head out of there. Zodiac and Jim. I don't always pair these two up, but they've been paired up a lot lately. Jim's got the old doesn't love it pull evil right up there see that yeah and uh, that's why he's putting his head in the middle a little more um, I'll give him a little lenience on that zodiac changed his harness up a little bit put the old aluminum hames on here fits that collar better I kind of like things better that way uh, someday I'm gonna replace this front tug and put a regular piece on here they came with the harness, but this piece right here, like Jim has. Um, boy, when I add that piece on, that made this really long. So it's plenty long now, but it was really long with that piece on. Well, Nick, uh, get him spun around here, back right up here, and we'll uh, get you a big log. Yeah, just a good quality hard maple right there. Small heart. Even textured growth rings, nice round growth rings, straight log. 
got a little bit of a flute, but it goes right straight up the side, and that's not much of a, a flute. Suppose I could have cleaned more brush for those boys. That's good. They're balanced on a rock. Woo. Here, I'm not as good as you. I can't run the camera. Woo. Stay right there. I can't run the camera. And the uh, hook chokers at the same time. So. so it's your turn to run the camera for a moment. Well, simplicity itself with this hitch. Not a lot fancy we can do. Try to, uh, try to put that hook right in the middle. So you may have to pull ahead just a little. Let me get up here where I can get some camera viewing. There you go. Move that hemlock branch. Bow. Woo. Okay, you missed. So the whole key is to get it right going forward. There you go. That's how it's gonna be at the horse pull tomorrow. Fortunately, we got well-behaved horses. You won't have trouble. There you, whoa. whoa. Think about it. Now G. 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 You gotta step that cold up. Step up. Whoa. 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 There you go. You're right where you wanna be and hold them there. See, folks, this is why Nick's the cameraman and I'm the I'm the worker. Cause Nick would be giving you a lot better camera work than I am right now. Can they back up just a squirt? Gotcha. Okay, Nick, let me get ahead of you. And we'll haul that nice maple log out through here and to the landing. Good job, Bob. All the way forward on the left where you and I rolled that cherry together. Yeah. Put this maple there, please. Well, we got it out here and the end of it's not quite as good as the, the butt end. That's still a darn good log. Prime plus grade, maybe even a rotary or definitely a baseball bat grade. Hang on a minute, Nick. Hang on a minute. Oh, we had a short yesterday. We'll put it on this video. It showed Jim's collar riding up. Because we had the wrong collar on him. Today we got the right collar. Most collars are seated pretty well from front and behind, you notice. So, now we'll wait for Nick to come back and maybe we'll work on uh, that hung tree or something. Hello, Jim and Zodi. Moving a few logs day before the Angelica horse pull. How you living, Nick? Fine. Me too. Here, Nick, you can film. Look at that, handsome. In the uh, video we released earlier in the week, um, an embarrassing moment caught on tape or something. And uh, I told about a tree that I cut on, uh, in Zor Valley over here in western New York. And we uh, pulled it down with a skitter. And it counterbalanced. And the butt of the tree went up under the skitter lifted the skitter up and was sitting the skitter on its blade nearly tipped it over frontwards uh the situation was the tree was on level ground but the top counterbalanced over a, a bank and the top's heavier than the butt and when it did the top you know this is the bank and the top of the tree the top went like this and that's what picked the skitter up 
that's the situation we have here. Now, this isn't real extreme, but you do want to be aware of it. If you look, and this tree's not hung by much, but if you look, that ground drops right off out there. It's uh, steeper out there. And when that comes down, this butt is likely to, uh, to go right up in the air, maybe five, six feet. Not guaranteed, but likely. That's a, that's a scenario you want to be watching for. So, first thing is obvious. Don't ride on the damn log cart when you do that. If this, if this butt raises five feet, so does that cart. And I'd, I'd end up 20 feet away on my head. Uh, try not to let your log cart uh, bounce like that at all. Uh, and re the way you achieve that is by hooking uh, on a little bit longer chain. Don't let this get up and underneath your log cart. So uh, really shouldn't be an issue. But in order to ensure that it's not an issue, we're going to cut some of this stuff around here. We're going to cut these little dead cherry. Looks like Brian already did cut uh, some of this dead beach on the ground and uh, we're going to do all we can to make sure this is as safe as possible. Says the guy starting the chainsaw with no chaps. As with any hung tree and I think we're more than fine here but one of the first things you want to check is to make sure this hinge wood is cut all the way loose. That will hang a team of horses up and hurt their confidence as pulling horses if they're hooking to something as dead set as that. Did that fire? Yes, it did. Okay, we did not pinch the bar, but that tree told us something when it shot back like this. That's the direction it wants to go. Uh, that's where the tension is, and that's what caused that issue I told you about the other day, and we talked about it just a minute ago, where the uh, where the uh, tree shot forward underneath the log skidder and set that log skidder up in the air. This tree is almost the same scenario and we need to be very aware of that. I need to hook on a longer chain. I also need to keep my horses moving. They can't stop and let this get under them and, and cause an issue. I need to keep them moving until they're in a safe place. Um, I wasn't sure, I'm, I'm yelling at you, I apologize. I wasn't sure, it's my ears, and here I am running a saw without earmuffs. Uh, I wasn't sure where the pressure was and that if it was gonna shoot this way or not until I, uh, I cut that hinge and then I could feel it shooting this way. Now we know that's the pressure and we know what we're up against, so. I guess. Let's deal with it, Nick. Hung trees are fun, aren't they? Oh, yeah.
good news. I'm waiting for somebody to say, what's that? What's that? Oh, you can say it, Nick. Yeah, I thought maybe somebody in the audience would. I got good news. That's a hell of a good quality butt log there. That first 10 foot is really good quality. Look at that tiny little heart and all that good white wood. Because there's nothing worse than all this risk of pulling one of these down and, and the danger of it and, and how difficult it is. And then having the tree not be worth much anyway. So at least, uh, at least we're doing this and having a little value on here. I probably shouldn't say there's nothing worse. That's hyperbole. I'm sure there's lots of things worse. But it's no fun, I guarantee that. <coughs> Nick, grab us a choker while I'm finishing this. Nice little butt log. Not little, nice. Good size maple butt log there. You know, it's a choker with the hook over here. And I think that might roll and, and get it down as opposed to pulling forward. We'll probably have to do a little of both. Like we'll roll, roll, roll. You got a thrill, my soul. All right. But really, a little roll might save us from going forward, and that might make things even safer. So, guess I'll get the horses up here and we'll see. happened <laughs> exactly what i told you we didn't want to happen happened the damn horses that colt who only does what he wants didn't step over the edge of this right here and it caused the thing to push up under it now just for a note how would you folks like to be riding on that cart when this happens go ahead and stop for now Get it! Yeah, let's step up here. I knew this was an issue. I knew Zodiac's a dork face who only does what he wants to do. Right here's a little ledge from a road they made in here for a snowmobile trail. 
and he questioned whether or not he wanted to step over it. I should have had a whip over his ass or something. Uh, that's what put us in danger. If we'd have just kept going, you know, this, this tree would have behaved just like I said it was going to. You know, I read this tree properly, that it was going to bounce up in the air as it did. I also read it properly that it was going to shove forward as it did. What I didn't read properly was my horse was going to be a dork face and not decide to go over the edge of that. Um, all's well, and, and it was fine. A little bit embarrassing to have a second embarrassing thing happen uh, on film within a, a couple days, but whatever. I have spent a lifetime making a fool of myself, I guess. <laughs> but we do have it down, and it was... All ended well. well. Let's go back and watch that tree come down. I'll try to uh, patch that in here right now. And you, as I'm patching that in here, I'm slapping a fly on him, by the way. I'm about angry enough to smack him, but it's not good training. It wouldn't do anything right now. The time to smack him is the minute he didn't step over that. He should have had a whip on his ass. Um, and I probably should have been on the other side too and not been in, in this mess. But anyway, before you watch this in slower motion, there, horse, got the fly. Or, or before I repeat that, think about if somebody would have been sitting on this cart, sitting on this cart. Think of how you would have been. You'd have been down, you'd have been up in the air. It would have been a mess. That's why we don't sit on the log cart when we're pulling a hung tree. Well, fortunately, we don't carry a ton of junk with us on the cart. We got three chokers. One of them's already on the on the tree. Uh, we got our long chain, and the PV went flying. That could have just as easily been a person if they were riding on here. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this, Nick. Now it's time to cut logs and skid logs. I think what I'll do is I'll measure this out. If you, if you look around the end here, folks. I'll measure this log out if you look around the end. And I'm gonna put my choker around here, maybe, something like that. We'll see. Back it up to it, back tar it up to it, and then make my cut, and we, we should have this lifted real high. First thing first, let's get it measured, and then cut. You know, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> don't hold a grudge on horses. They're just horses. They don't have complicated emotions. They're not trying to screw you over. I'm sitting here right now watching that little shithead swish flies and, hey, put his head in the middle, which he knows better, and, and kind of pissed because he didn't step down off the edge of that like I asked him to. Uh, there's no sense dwelling on that. There's no sense having a bad day. You know, teach him to do that. Um, but don't uh, don't sit around and stew about it. They're, they're not trying to piss you off. They're just horses, you know. They don't have complicated emotions. They're not getting back at you earlier for saying something or something like that. So that uh, seems to be a really nice 10. Right about this leaf is 10.6. It seems to be veneer quality and I think eight foot will get us right around uh, that middle of that branch that cluster there whenever you can keep a defect on the end of the log you should let me get a chainsaw
Why don't you explain what the mark of Zorro there is? Uh, I'll show you where the log's not good. I Why think. does it have an N? Not good. Nine. N oh, for nine. nine. Generally, we cut... Uh, That's a good log. And don't be, the log buyer might be watching this. Don't say stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, generally, we cut even lengths. Eights, tens, twelves, fourteens. Um... We don't do a lot of odd lengths. We, we do some when we have two, and we had two here. Uh, we were just way too far up into that crotch if we didn't. So we cut a nine, and the log buyers don't see a lot of odd lengths. I can tell you this being a log buyer. We see the even lengths, and we got a good eye for them. We can tell right away. And so when I actually cut a nine, I mark it with an N. N with a little foot thing, so the log buyer knows. Learn that trick from Pat Schultz. Todd Rosler does it too. He does a IV, Roman numerals. He's smarter than the rest of us. <laughs> so, uh, shit, Nick, we might skid this tree length. Want to point out something here. Had this little cluster here that we had to cut around. There was a time when I may have ended one log here and started another here uh thanks to ronnie mulligan he taught me just cut right through the middle of that you only get about six inches of lumber on the end on one very tiny bit of that board and about six or eight inches on the other and and we'll put it right through the trim saw and and be fine and um you don't waste any of the tree it, we, we don't need to make a lot of cutouts there was a time i had to cut here and here and had a little foot and a half long block that would have been a cutout. I, I don't, I will not say never, but we rarely do that anymore. And uh, a good log buyer will catch on to what you're doing and, and reward you for that. Are there any good log buyers out there, Nick? I'm not sure. I hope so. Brett Sturdivant. PJ. Yep. Yeah. Chad. Mike Butler. Sam Kersey, his brother's a subscriber. I'm gonna do a couple things here. I'm gonna perform some horse abuse. 
No, I'm not. But, and I should have done this earlier to start with. Let me give you an example. In Centerville, New York, we pull, East Arcade, New York's another one. We pull horses and we pull the horses right up to the fence. And a lot of horses, especially if they're used to an electric fence, don't want to go right up to the fence. They want to stop five feet short of it. Carl Root this year, let's see, they won that pull in the light class, him and Gertman. And what they did before the hitch, because he had to go right up about a foot away from that fence, before he hitched on, drove his horses there, drove them right up to the fence and let somebody on the other side scratch their nose so they see that fence isn't going to hurt them. Then he hitched onto the load and he went 27.6 and their noses were just about touching the fence and he won the pull. That's pretty damn good training right there. That's what I should have done, especially before a dangerous situation. I should have made him and got him used to stepping over this ledge. And I didn't. I just assumed he'd do it. I thought he was a little more cooperative than that. So anyway, a little too late after we made a fool of ourselves pulling the tree down. But I am going to make him step over that and show him that it doesn't hurt. Whoa, back. I'm going to make him back over it. Not for any real training reason. Whoa, back. Other than just to get him in the same spot. So he has to do it again. Whoa, back. He didn't even need a smack on the ass, really. It didn't hurt anything. Back. In this hot weather, you guys have seen me swat a hundred flies on film here. And you know damn well I'm hitting them flies harder than I just did hit the horse with the whip. Gee. Woo. 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 Is this cut off? No, it's not cut off. Good question, Nick. Uh, it is not cut off. And it's not because I'm an airhead. It's because I'm going to try to do something here that should, when everything falls in place, get this cart lifted, real, this log lifted really well. Gee, back. Whoa. Yeah. Watch their heads and film at the same time. Okay. So normally, normally Nick would just sit on the cart and, and hold the horses while I cut this. Uh, but I want to film this, and I want. I want you to maybe stand more on Jim's side as I cut that and watch that tree fall. Watch how well we'll have it hitched at that point. Right. And in order to film that, the best, easiest, safest way is for him to stand up by the head. gather up the lines. Again, I'm going to walk for the same reason as before. It's just safer. Okay, Nick. 
Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I want Nick to kind of focus on this log and see how it, when it ends up, where it ends up. check for and I just did over my shoulder is to make sure everything's cut loose and it is now well we're in a good spot easy for me to call it good I'm gonna put two chokers on here come around here now One of our early videos, we showed this tip of the day, but as soon as I let this go, it does that. So, take a little stick, put it right in there, and it'll hold. Now, I'm going to, this is not going to start easily. Ooh, and I'm going to ask him to pull a little bit. Gee. Woo, back. Woo. Woo. Once this log comes about 50 feet, this tree, uh, it will pull a lot easier. Woo. All the way to the landing. Woo. Ha. Uh, ha. Uh. Woo. Back. Zodiac thinks he's having a day off. Uh, Tomorrow's. Woo. Ha. Get it. Woo. Horse pull day. By God, I'm not. They're, they're acting a touch lazy. We ain't going to get away with that. So we're going to hook them onto something that's going to make them tighten the tugs and pull. G. Woo. Woo. That way, tomorrow when we hit that horse pull, maybe they'll say, hey, we are pulling horses. Whoa. Zodi, Jim. Zodi, Jim. Here! Whoa. Whoa. Now. Whoa. You know what we're going to do next? Hmm. We're going to cut that. They made a okay effort they sure could have done better but we're gonna cut that i think shut the camera horses with the end of the tongue you steer your horses with the eveners and that little damn roan colt wasn't doing his job therefore we're not turning i find it kind of irritating but now i'm in a spot where i have to cut this or release the hitch or something Zodiac and I are not exactly bonding today, are we, Nick? No. Oh. I hate to take small hitches because it pulls so easy all the way out there. So here's the tip. Put your choker on first because that would end up on the ground and be uh, hard to get a choker under. Everything hurts. Even my pride. It's just not going well today, Nick. Hmm. You know what you gotta do when you get one of them days? What? Those days. Get over it. Regroup. Make it better. <laughs> towards the, middle, the bottom facing what direction it's pushing down but it's also pushing that way because those horses are turned so therefore i want to be on this side 
when you're cutting behind a skidder or even a tractor, especially if you have three or four trees behind you, keep that skidder even with your hitch. Don't turn it off on an angle. Those logs will chase you. It's a lot safer to keep that uh, skidder uh, in line with the hitch, not cocked off at an angle. Same thing with horses, but I didn't have any choice here. question my horsemanship for the last five ten minutes I'll accept it because I'm questioning my horsemanship also Whoa. 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 what happened there zodiac was uh giving it enough effort that he was in the damn collar and he helped turn it I don't know if you folks understand what I mean when I say you don't turn a, a sled or a cart or anything by the end of the tongue, you turn it by the eveners. That's why fifth wheel hitch wagons have stay chains from an evener back to the fifth wheel. That's why you keep your outside horse going up on the corner. And had Zodiac, he's just in a half-assed mood right now. Had he been acting like he should, um, we wouldn't have been in that situation. We wouldn't have needed to cut this. We went from a nice big hitch to an embarrassingly small hitch on a long skid. How'd you make out with that last log out there? Pretty good. Yeah, why don't you come with me and we'll do it together. Earlier in the year, we had a uh, mage, Rusty Van Etten's red horse. We are working with him. I never had a horse so eager to please. Reminded me of a Border Collie dog. Everything he did, he wanted to make you happy. Now we got Zodiac. Doesn't give a damn about you, the owner. Whatever Zodiac wants to do. And if he wants to swish flies instead of stepping where he should, that's what he's going to do. Am I the same guy that said horse appreciation day a while ago <laughs> i'm not appreciating zodi as much as i'd like to right now oh jim and then the fact is i just plain don't i appreciate him and what he does for us and stuff but i don't appreciate him the way i do that red pool i mean i don't feel like you should not socialism. Uh, you know. 
I don't feel like we should appreciate some bum who's never achieved anything and never worked at anything and was a drain on the system. The way we should appreciate some good working man that's uh, worked hard all his life and achieved a lot. And right now I'm not appreciating Zodiac as much as I appreciate a lot of other horses that are trying to be a good horse. Maybe I need to get over it. They're not doing it to try to make us mad. That's just how he is. I think we'll leave it right like that. Well, let's go get the rest of it, Sonny. Mm-hmm.